Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About Clutter. I'm your host, Margot Statton, a home organization and decluttering coach specializing in toxic clutter. And today we have a fun topic, which I hope will help some of you who are stuck decluttering. And we're going to be talking about personality types and clutter. Did you know that different personality traits and tendencies can influence how we approach organization and the accumulation of clutter. So it's possible that the reason that maybe you haven't been as successful as you would like to achieve a clean and tidy home is because you haven't really identified what's standing in your way, as well as maybe an approach to decluttering that works for you. And that has a lot to do with some of our personality traits. So I'm going to go through a few of them. And my hope is that one will resonate and will help you get motivated, roll up those sleeves, and start decluttering. So the first and very common personality type is the perfectionist. So who is the perfectionist? So somebody who's a perfectionist seeks order, precision, and control. Maybe you're somebody who has incredibly high standards for organization and cleanliness. Maybe you struggle with clutter because you tend to be overly cautious about discarding some items and can be paralyzed by fear of making a mistake. And it's really that mindset of, if I can't do it right, I won't do it at all. I think that also something that stands in the way of a perfectionist is really having an unrealistic expectation of the perfect home. And there's no such thing as a perfect home, right? It's really just about creating an environment that fits with you, your lifestyle, and your family. You know, a lot of times we look at images on Instagram and Pinterest and whatnot, and some folks have these like perfectly clean and tidy homes, and we're like, there's no way I'm ever going to be able to achieve that, right? That is kind of the idealistic, perfect space. I'm here to tell you that there's no such thing as a perfect home. It doesn't exist. There's no such thing as perfectly decluttering or perfectly organizing. It just does not exist. Decluttering is really not something that requires perfection. So if you are a perfectionist and if this is something that's standing in your way, I want you to hear me when I say there's no such thing as perfection when it comes to a clutter-free, clean, and tidy space. So to get started and sort of to overcome perfectionism, you want to start by setting realistic goals of what you want your home to look like. If you're somebody who has kids and pets, our homes are naturally not going to be perfectly clutter-free and organized. I mean, the second you organize a pantry, your kids are going to roll up in there and make a mess of it. And that's okay. That means lived in. That is a happy home. So set realistic goals for your space, for each area of your home. Also, if you're a perfectionist, what tends to help is to break tasks into smaller steps. And this is something that I preach across the board, and it is bite-sized decluttering. I love, love that method because a lot of times when we take in the big picture of everything that needs to get done on top of everything we do already, it is so overwhelming. So Try breaking tasks up into smaller steps. Do a drawer, do a section of the closet, do a shelf, right? Little bite-sized pieces, one at a time, and eventually you will have that subjectively clutter-free home. To all of my perfectionists, a clutter-free home is about functional organization, not immaculate perfection unless your home is going to be featured in some magazine done is better than perfect and also make sure that it doesn't matter what personality type you are celebrate your progress celebrate your wins we do a lot of this in my free facebook group if you haven't joined already feel free to do so it's called declutter your life and i'll leave a link to it in the show notes but 
Ladies, celebrate your progress every time you complete a drawer or a section or toss that sentimental item that you've held on to for a long time or that item that is for just in case purposes and you finally did it. Celebrate it. There is no such thing as perfection when it comes to decluttering. The next personality type, also incredibly common, and I think a lot of you would fall into this category, is the sentimentalist. And this is when we have strong emotional attachments to our possessions. Many of the items have a memory or an experience to go along with it. And we really struggle letting go, which leads to a lot of clutter. So I am somebody who is actually not really sentimental by nature. Um, I do have a memory box that I keep in my closet that I actually will never declutter. I mean, it really just holds, you know, a toy that I had when I was growing up. It holds some memorabilia from... um, my daughter, so some of my favorite artwork of hers, a little mini album, as well as, don't judge me, <laughs> a baby, when she was six months, we got her a little Led Zeppelin t-shirt, and I just have this memory in my head of her wearing it, and she was so cute with her little hair standing up, rocking out. I don't know. It's just such a lovely memory, but anyways, that's one of the things that I have in that box, so There's absolutely nothing wrong with holding on to sentimental items. Do not allow anybody, and I do mean anybody, to dictate what you should keep. Keep what you use and what you love. So if there are sentimental items that make you happy, by all means, keep them. It really only becomes a problem when when we are over-assigning sentimental value to too many items in our home. And you begin to feel suffocated and anxious and stressed. If that is something that you're experiencing and that's happening, then yes, it's time to declutter some of those items. So how do you overcome the sentimentalist mentality? You can focus on preserving memories without keeping every physical item. You can create a memory box like me for special memories and keep them out of sight. And also what has worked for so many of the clients that I've worked with is taking photographs of the sentimental objects to cherish that memory while reducing the amount of clutter. The next personality type is the procrastinator. So this is somebody who delays decision making and taking action. Maybe you're somebody who feels overwhelmed by all the clutter and organizing tasks. And you've probably because of that accumulated clutter because you postpone your decluttering responsibilities. The truth is we procrastinate that which we don't want to do because it might elicit stress, anxiety, and the feelings of overwhelm, and that which we perceive as we don't know how to do. So there's this expectation of failure. So it's like, what's the point of starting? I don't know how to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it the right way. I don't have the time. I mean, you know, the procrastinator tends to make a lot of excuses for why something is not going to get done. And that's totally normal. And that is absolutely okay. You know, with a lot of these personality types, it's really just accepting that the reason that you're delaying decluttering your home is because of this and then figuring out what you can do about it, right? Once we acknowledge, okay, this is our barrier. This is what's standing in my way. Great. How do I overcome it? And a great way to overcome procrastinating when it comes to decluttering is to simply commit to decluttering. (laughs) I know that that... that (laughs) That sounds silly, but, you know, a great way to overcome procrastination and what has really, really worked and has been effective is to identify your why. Why do you want to declutter? Why do you want to achieve a clutter-free, clean, and tidy home? How will this benefit you and your family? Typically, the stronger your why, if you're a procrastinator, the more likely you are to commit to decluttering. Another thing that really helps when it comes to procrastination is time management. And I find that blocking off specific time in your schedule to like tackle decluttering really 
keeps you focused. And a great way to do this is through setting alarms. So maybe you know that, you know, every Wednesday you ha- might have a little extra time from like 8 to 8.30 p.m. Set an alarm on your Alexa for 8 p.m. Set another timer for 30 minutes later or 15 minutes later, whatever you have time for to go off indicating when you're done. So for procrastinators, setting those two alarms works seamlessly. Also, if you're a procrastinator and one of the reasons you're procrastinating is because you just feel like you don't know how to do it, learn, you know, consume podcasts, YouTube videos, um, maybe even read books. But I can tell you this, the best way to learn how to declutter and organize is to actually do it. Because you're going to learn so much from actually taking action. I promise you that. While it's lovely and I appreciate all of my listeners and my viewers on my YouTube channel, I love you all so much. But I really, what I want, what makes me incredibly happy is for that to inspire you all to roll up your sleeves and just start taking action. And just like with the perfectionist, you want to start small to build momentum because you've been procrastinating, which means that it's overwhelming to you or you don't know how you you don't want to bite off more than you can chew. So bite sized decluttering. The next personality type is the collector. This is somebody who enjoys acquiring and preserving various items leading to a little bit too much clutter. So maybe you're somebody who struggles to organize your collections effortlessly and this way it appears cluttersome because it's just, again, it's a little chaotic. So maybe there's a lot of stuff on shelves. Maybe you have boxes of stuff that you collect. Again, absolutely nothing wrong with collecting items. So I am an avid book collector. I have hundreds of books on my floor to ceilings bookshelves, but they are organized very efficiently, you know, by size, by genre, by alphabetical order, and it makes presenting them look less cluttersome. So I'm not asking anyone to give up on your favorite collectibles, but a great way to overcome this personality type is focusing on organization. So if you collect something, it could be books, it could be little statues, it could be, I don't know, retro items of some sort, focus on organizing and displaying them in a lovely way. As a collector, you also want to focus maybe a little bit on quality over quantity, as well as going through the items that you've collected over the years and seeing if it makes sense to let go of some of the duplicates. Next, when it comes to personality types and clutter is the disorganized dreamer. So if you're that person, you are the creative, the artist. You struggle with maintaining an organized home environment because to a certain extent, chaos to you promotes inspiration. And by the way, that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yet, you know, at times it does contribute to our homes looking a little messy and disorganized. So for if you are the disorganized dreamer, maybe focus on practical organization systems that fit with your needs and still foster creativity. So I'm not saying putting away all of your art supplies, right? Because that's inspirational, right? Seeing those paintbrushes, but maybe organize them in a jar or a container. Just try to make things look a little bit neater. Another thing is creating a few routines for regular tidying. So I know when the creative mood strikes, you know, we're kind of like in the zone and we can be in that zone for hours, but maybe have a routine where once a week you tidy up your space. Something also that might shock you disorganized dreamers is that Clearing a physical space can actually enhance creativity, not hinder it. So you can still have a clutter-free space. Again, remember, clutter-free is subjective. So somebody might walk into your art studio and be like, oh my God, this is like a hot mess, (laughs) you know, and it's not a hot mess for you. So there's, there's a balance between kind of being disorganized 
and being creatively organized where things are still kind of messy and all over the place, but there's almost a system to the madness. So finally, our last personality type is the minimalist. And this is somebody who prefers a simplified, clutter-free lifestyle, prioritizing only essential and meaningful possessions. A minimalist typically maintains organization by being intentional about what they bring into their home, preventing the clutter buildup. So if you're somebody who is striving to transition to a more minimalistic lifestyle, you can achieve this by adapting the minimalist principles by assessing the value and purpose of each item. Minimalists also love versatility. So it's really in their home. And by the way, being a minimalist, by the way, being a minimalist does not mean that you get rid of like everything in their home. Like that is a fallacy. Minimalists have furniture. They have artwork on their walls, but they're very conscious about the purpose and the value of each item in their space and they don't overdo it. And again, they love items that are versatile, that serve multiple purposes that are maybe convertible in nature. So to transition to a more minimalistic lifestyle, let go of items that no longer serve a purpose or bring you any type of happiness. You want to focus on the present and being in the moment and realize that, you know, it's not really things that bring you happiness. It's experiences and it's the people that you experience them with. So I wonder which personality type are you? Right. Once we understand our personality type, we can then begin to figure out a system that works for us. And ladies, decluttering and home organization is really trial and error. There are going to be times where you organize something and put it somewhere and you're going to be like, "Ooh, that does not work for me. And this is why perfection doesn't exist. Embrace your unique personality and use them as strengths to achieve a clutter free and organized space. Because we're approaching the holiday season, give the gift of decluttering. So I actually have a really cool Black Friday deal happening. It is a gift certificate where you can purchase one month of one-on-one coaching with me at 80% off. So typically this is something that costs $200 a month. And because the holidays are coming, you actually only pay 40 bucks You get that first month of one-on-one coaching with me for $40. Again, it is a gift certificate, so feel free to get it for yourself or you can gift it to a friend or a loved one. I think it's just such a lovely gift to give somebody, especially since we are approaching New Year's resolutions and what can be better than getting help to achieve a clean and tidy home. I will leave a link to it in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening. As always, good luck on your decluttering journey and remember to be good to yourselves.